How's it going, Eliminators? Today, we're gonna to be finishing up part two of the Kubota mower deck repair. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So in part one of the Kubota mower deck repair, we did a basic clean and inspection and found out that unfortunately, a lot of the areas on this mower deck were too thin to just go ahead and weld using the copper puck. So I had to use the plasma cutter to cut out patches such as these and then I went ahead and welded in new metal just like that so that we're kind of strengthening this deck because as you guys saw in the first part of the video and I did get a lot of comments what happens is these mower decks you guys can see they do rust and the metal flakes off and this is going to create a couple issues what will happen is whenever I'm plasma cutting out these areas the heat from the plasma cutter transfers into that rusted area and I don't know if you guys can see it but a larger area here has chipped away as you guys can see there's all kinds of pieces breaking off so there were some comments in the first part saying you know why wouldn't you go ahead and just cut out a larger section and weld in a larger section and the answer is the more you cut away the less original metal of the mower deck you're gonna to have to weld to. And unfortunately, you know, you come in here and you cut a larger section, there is no end in sight for where this chipping stops. So for today's video, we're cutting out some of these pieces here. You guys can see I've already started. I'm gonna get these tacked into position just so that they don't move around on me. And I am using the plasma cutter to cut those pieces out of that plate that I showed you in part one. So I'll roll some clips of that. Well, it looks like the old man finally decided to make an appearance in one of the kids videos. Sure glad I got him to help me out here. So as you guys saw, we're using the plasma cutter to cut out these pieces. Now, as I mentioned in part one, I was just cutting out the areas here freehand with the plasma cutter. So the cuts aren't as perfect, but once we do get these pieces cut out, you guys can see I'm just laying it in there and then I'm taking a permanent marker and just marking an edge where I think I need to cut. And then I'm just once again, freehand cutting these pieces to trim up. And then any smaller areas like over here, I'm taking that to the bench grinder. So as you guys can see, I'm just taking the permanent marker and just marking up the top edge of that so I know where to grind. We are getting into some thin metal there, but that's something that I can weld up using the copper puck. If you wanna see more of that, you should watch the first part of the video because I go into more detail about the copper puck in that video. And as you guys can see, the more that I cut and grind away, the better these pieces are fitting. You guys can also see that I've put a little arrow on the metal. So that lets me know that that is the inside piece and that it faces up. That way, when I come back from the bench grinder, I don't have to rotate the piece and kind of guess where it goes. All right, so I got the magnet set up underneath. I'm wearing my thinner gloves here just so that I can kind of feel the edge because I want to be able to try to position it to the point where it's nice and flush. See that? So my finger's not grabbing, so I should be able to go ahead and tack this into position. So I'm continuing on with welding and in order for you guys not to just see the same clip of me pressing the button a thousand times, this is what I'm having to do here. This one, I was blowing through like crazy so I had to keep, you can see right up here. So I just had to keep tacking and tacking. This one came out much better. You guys can see, tack, tack, tack all the way down and then once I start to blow through then I try to do a little stitch so that I can get a little bit more metal, which I'll try to get a shot of what I'm doing here now. So up here, you guys can see I got a gap on the bottom there. So what I'm doing is I'm just tacking to build up some metal along the bottom, and then I can do the same on the patch, and then hopefully I can bridge that gap. And 
that one's coming out all right. Now I did want to mention this, one thing about welding mower decks like this, because you're doing a lot of these tack welds, you know, on and off, on and off, and you're not really laying beads, you want to have what's known as a recessed tip. So you can see the tip inside, that's what feeds the wire. So basically you want to have a recessed tip to protect the tip so that you can kind of go down, engage the welder, lift off, and we're just walking it ever so slowly along that weld. And as you guys can tell that I'm doing a whole bunch of tacking on those pieces, my settings for my welding helmet are short delay time with a high sensitivity, and I'm running it at about 11 right there. So a high sensitivity means when you're tack welding, the mask will auto darken very quickly, and the delay time will be quick. So it'll darken quickly, and it'll also go back to normal quickly so you can get ready for your next tack position. If you were to set the delay time on this mask to long, the mask would stay darker longer. And that helps whenever you're doing high amp welding, so the weld pool is gonna stay hotter for a longer period of time. You want a little bit longer of a delay to protect your eyes. All right, so I now have all of the smaller patches, that one there too, welded into the mower deck from the underside, but I'm not gonna be grinding these flush because obviously grass is gonna stick to the underside of these mower decks regardless of uh, whether it's smooth or not. So I think at this point what I'm gonna do is flip it right side up on the sawhorses here so that I can go and weld those patches in from the top side just so that I know there's not gonna be any holes or any thin spots where the metal can start to rot away again. So starting from the side with the discharge chute, check it out. That's actually not too bad there. Move over to this part here. You guys can see thin spots there. So what I wanna do, I was thinking is just, same thing I did on the underside, is just go around and weld these from the top as well. That one looks pretty solid apart from maybe here and right up there, but yeah, this one, I can fill those seams. So I don't want dirt and debris sitting in there. So I'll probably end up welding the top side, but I'm gonna have to clean them up first. I think I'm gonna use a flat disc for this. So I now have all my smaller patches welded, including some of the smaller tack welds that I had to do. I'm gonna clean that one up a little bit. That's welded center and that one there, plus the one over there. So for this, I just wanted to show you guys, this whole deck is eighth inch, right? So you can tell how thick the steel is, but what I've tried to do here is get a piece that's rusted away. See that? So you guys can see over the years, that's the thickness of metal that I'm welding to in some areas. And it's just unfortunate. It's nicer to weld to nice thick steel, but again, you don't always have that luxury because this is like quarter inch thick here. This is real nice thick steel. So if I can trim this up with the plasma, just basically trim the weld off of that, then I could re-weld to this. And then I shouldn't even really have to take this whole piece off or bend it out too much because it is welded here as well. All right, so it looks like I got some thin metal right about here, up here too. So I'm thinking right down here is where I'm gonna cut. Try and bring it along the top edge here before I start getting into this curve. And then for now, at least I'm planning on cutting straight down here 
so I can use the plasma to cut off the weld because like I said this is like quarter inch thick steel here. Alright so this time around I'm going to try to use a little guide plate here, try to center that up. All right, so I got that cut out. I think I can just weld that up there. It seems pretty solid. And then over here, I might try the copper puck or I might just cut out a little area here. But I wanna measure this and uh, get a piece of plate cut for that. And then over here, this piece here has cracked. So he must've hit something in it, pushed back like that. I'm just gonna weld because I've taken the wire wheel to clean that up a little bit. I wanna clean that up a bit more there, but that's all solid steel. So I should just be able to weld so it broke right on the top edge of that weld. So I think that's fixable and I won't have to completely cut this bracket off. So I'm just taking some measurements starting at the two inch line and it's about six and a quarter down below. And if I come up to the top, it's about six and three eighths. And I might try to get fancy with it because this is about five eighths of an inch. So I might try to leave myself a little corner there on the top left. So using a tape measure, a Sharpie marker, my straight edge and a couple magnets, I've just marked out something like this, be able to weld that in as one solid piece. All right, so this side's looking pretty good. Top edge, it's okay. Like I said, I can always move it around. I'm getting caught up on the back side of that weld, so I'm going to take the plasma cutter just to that edge, maybe try to clean that up. All right, so I'm pretty happy with this here. Seems pretty flush up top. There's a slight curve to the front of the deck. I can try to hammer that in, but I just wanna get this top corner tacked into position so that my plate, for the most part, doesn't move around. So the bottom edge is looking all right. I put a couple tacks, kind of hard to get the tip into the bottom edge there, but this section you guys can see me hammering on, so I'm just trying to get it to the point where it's as flush as possible. All right, so the plate is welded in. This time I welded it from the top first. Now, I was wondering what I was gonna do here and I wasn't quite sure. And then I picked up that little piece that I cut off of that plate and I kind of put it on a 45. So I'm thinking I'll just try to weld that in. I'm gonna clean this up here and uh, I'll just put some welds there, put some welds there and weld it from the top. And that should be good. I was blowing through here and a little bit up here too where I had some areas to grind down. But all in all, it's coming out all right. All right, so everything else is welded up now. I've removed the wheel here so that I can access this bottom area. Now, I'm kind of thinking that I'm gonna just cut out a rectangle here, weld in a plate so that it's flush, just like all my other welds. 
the problem is this is kind of blown away in the back here. So I think what I'm gonna do is once I weld the plate in flush, I'm gonna go in with another plate in behind there because the only way that I would be able to fix the hole down there is if I completely cut away this whole thing. And like I said, this is solid enough here to the point where I think I'm just gonna come and tack and tack and then I'll weld this crack. I was able to pull it down a little bit so that it's a little more flush than what it was before. Now that was welded on C with a wire speed of four. Like I said, you get a little bit better penetration, but that was probably the thickest area. You know, if you try to weld something like this down here on amperage C, you're just gonna blow through, and like I said, you end up making more work for yourself. All right, so I think I'm gonna do this one freehand. Might be difficult to get in there. Hope I don't burn through too bad on the bottom side, but we'll see how it goes. All right, so I've measured roughly three and a half by two and three eighths, but I kind of got this like low section here, right? And then the metal kind of comes up a little bit and I didn't want to cut too far down because again, I want something to weld to, but I think I can make a piece that we've already cut work for this. All right, so check it out. This is a piece that we cut before and we had to cut it on an angle to make it fit. So I measured three and a half width and two and three eighths height off the bottom left corner. And then this kind of comes up like that. So I'm hoping this angle works out in my favor, but I'm gonna get this piece cut out and we'll try to fit it up. And I tried to use a better straight edge this time. So I'm using the flat bar that we used. All right, so I got this bracket welded in now. Once again, when I'm welding thicker steel to the new plate, you can turn up the amps and get a nice weld that penetrates into the metal. Now I didn't film it, but I did flip the deck upside down and I welded a plate in behind that area underneath this bracket that was rotted out. So that section, even though the metal is still rotted out in that area, like I said, instead of cutting the bracket off and having to weld in a new patch here and then re-weld the bracket on, I just welded a small little patch on the underside of the mower deck. And now that whole thing is solid steel. You guys can see welded the top, welded the corner of the bracket as well. So at this point, I'm just cleaning up the surface of the deck. I just took the wire wheel quick to the welds. I'm not gonna be grinding them flush. Obviously, the metal is super thin in some areas. This weld repair is trying to just extend this mower deck's life. It's worth it to go ahead and repair it now just to get those extra few years out of it. So at this point, I'm just laying down some primer. I'm not even gonna worry about that sticker. It'll probably just get blasted off if my customer ever washes it, which I will be instructing him to try to keep this mower deck as clean as possible. Don't wanna forget this little spot either. All right, so now that I got just a light layer of primer on, I went out and picked up some of this Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch Orange. Now, by no means is this a Kubota orange, but it's gonna be good enough to cover up the spots that I welded because I don't wanna be leaving bare metal. My customer can always clean and repaint the mower deck at a later time. Like I said, this is just gonna be good enough to get those welds covered. So I got the mower painted up, just a first coat. I'll probably hit it with a second coat. Now it may be picking up as yellow-ish in the camera here, so I'll try to adjust my lighting there on the camera so you guys can see that's probably as close as what it looks like in real life because the LED lighting kind of throws off the white balance 
for recording. So I'll probably get a couple more coats of paint on this mower deck. And then, like I said, I'm gonna flip it upside down. I am going to be undercoating it, sharpening all three blades, and then I'll be reinstalling it onto the mower. I'm not gonna film any of that because I do have separate videos covering those topics. Well, that's gonna wrap up part two of this Kubota mower deck repair. Like I said, I didn't wanna film the undercoating of the mower deck or the sharpening of the blades because I already have videos on that. If you guys wanna check those out, I link them in the top right of the screen. With that being said, if you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week, check channel out for new content. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.